All right, so this section is going to be about bonding. In the last videos, it showed how to take a cation or make cations and anions, okay, with the uh, dot models. This is going to show how do you how do you take those cations and and anions and put them together. How do they actually bond? You may have to like pause because I'm not going to just sit here and wait for you uh, to get time to write it down. So just pause and then continue. I'll try to say a few things about each one and then show the examples. Um, in another video. So, already said that atoms want to be stable, okay? Um, when we made the cations, it looked like the electrons went away, but really the electrons in the outer energy level uh, were given up to something else, to a different uh, element, different atom, and then it was left with a full outer electron shell, uh, or energy level, sorry, an outer uh, energy level. So even though we didn't put any dots around it, at the end when we made the ion, it was still stable because the outer one was filled. There's our octet. Put a couple stars next to octet. It's a really important word. So when atoms bond together, they, they form chemical bonds, right? Once again, think about what happens when you have a positive and a negative. They're gonna come together, opposites attract. This is just showing um, or writing how you actually start to write these things out. And I'm gonna do that separately. First off, ionic bonds. If you ask me, the simpler of the two. So we already mentioned, or I mentioned, I keep saying we, but I mentioned that metals are on the middle and left-hand side of the periodic table, and they're positive ions. Okay, they lose electrons to make positive, and they gain. Um, the non-metals gain the electrons over on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So we have things from the left side of the periodic table and things from the right side of the periodic table coming together form these ionic bonds. Here's the description here, right? Where the sodium is giving up its electron, it becomes a positive one, and the chlorine becomes a, a one minus or a negative one. Okay, so these are a couple of the examples that I'm going to do. First, I'm going to do sodium chloride, and I'm either going to do uh, calcium fluoride or magnesium fluoride, but it's the same idea. Magnesium is right under calcium. Okay. So. so first off, First example, and we'll get into naming them later, but this is sodium and chlorine. So sodium is Na and chlorine is Cl. So the first thing we're going to do is write the electron dot models. Electron dot diagrams, I keep calling them models. As soon as you see electron dot, you know just to put the valence electrons around. And then chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On our periodic table, chlorine is over here. 17th group, get rid of the one. That means seven valence electrons. Sodium's in our first column. So this electron goes here. And then we have sodium being the one plus and chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I shouldn't have put them like that. I should follow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's a one minus. So you notice how I put the little X 
to show the electron that came from here and where it went to. We only need one of these because a one plus and a one minus, they'll cancel each other out to be neutral. So that's our first example. Example one. Example two, calcium and fluorine. So calcium is Ca and fluorine is just F. So we're going to start out with calcium. There's two valence electrons. It's in the second column. Two valence electrons. Fluorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So calcium needs, needs to give up two. Fluorine only needs one. So let's take this guy. Put them over here. And then where's this one go? We need another fluorine. So really, calcium has two, fluorine needs only one. So we need two fluorines to get rid of the electrons from the calcium. So calcium is a two plus, it loses two electrons. Fluorine is a one minus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the extra is a one minus. So we actually need two of them. So we try to show it both ways. So basically try to show it how, hey, where does this one go? Oh, we need another one. Or you can look at it this is a two plus, and so therefore we need two minus ones to cancel out that two plus. So let's just say something over here was a three plus. How many mi uh, one minuses would we need? We need three of them. All right, this next one's a little bit more difficult. It's magnesium and nitrogen. So that's Mg and N. Magnesium is Mg. Magnesium has two valence electrons. Nitrogen has five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna play the game where I'm taking the electrons and putting them over and trying to figure out how many of each we need. All right, so this would go here. And this would go here. But you see, we still have a problem here because magnesium is fine, but nitrogen only has seven. So that means we need another magnesium. So now the nitrogen has eight, which is fine, that's perfect. But magnesium still has one left over here. So we need another nitrogen, it's like going back and forth. Okay, nitrogen now has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need uh, one more magnesium. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I messed it up. Got interrupted, somebody stopped in the room. So anyway, this, this one goes here, and this one will go here. So now if we look at them, all of these have been given up, and these each have eight over here. So magnesium is a two plus, and we have three of them, and I'm running out of room, okay? We have three two pluses. And then my nitrogen, though, is a three minus. It gained three electrons, it gained three negative charges. This should go right here. One, two, three, four, five, and then it gained three. And one, two, three, four, five, and once again, it gained three. So if we look at it, plus two, plus two, plus two, right? That's six. Six extra pluses, we'll say. 
and then three minus, three minus, that's six minus, right? So you got the six plus, you got the six minus, that's perfect, they're neutral. And we'll do one more, fourth example. The last one was the most difficult if you ask me. How about aluminum and chlorine? Aluminum is a three plus. There's three valence electrons. Chlorine is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's in the 17th group here, seven valence electrons. Aluminum's over here under boron. So this one gives up, this one receives. Oh, we need another one. And then we need one more. So we have Al, three plus, and then we have three Cls. Once again, ran out of room. And don't forget to put in your your examples. Man, it's pretty fast. I totally understand. All right. But basically, one's giving up, the positive one's giving up, and the other side's receiving. Metal, non-metal. Let's go take a quick look at the PowerPoint again. So here we go. This is actually what I did, okay? I first drew the diagrams for both, electron dot diagrams. Then I drew an arrow showing where the electrons go. And then I put brackets around the ions and showed the charge. So this is actually the steps that you saw me follow. We're gonna finish uh, this one with this last um, this video with this last slide from the PowerPoint. Um, metallic bonds, if you look at anything in the middle, okay, of the uh, periodic table, not anything, but lead, gold, silver, okay, they tend to form metallic bonds. And, and the special thing, the thing to really note about it, and I don't know where it says it here, but basically you have the electrons being able to freely flow throughout the metal, okay? It's what makes them really good conductors of electricity is the ability to have electrons freely flowing throughout it. There's nothing to show as far as, um, like I did for ionic bonding, here's our little video. <laughs> it just shows the electrons just going everywhere throughout the atom, so atoms. So let's say these are all gold atoms, it's pure gold, and you could have the electrons flowing freely throughout them. Uh, next video will be on covalent bonding.